Hello, my name is Joe Lewis. Welcome to this series on self-defense. The 10 best self-defense techniques. Now what I've done is this. Rather than having a student look at self-defense through the eyes of maybe a black belt champion or a world champion like myself, I want you to look at self-defense basically in the sense of what would I do if I'm being attacked and I'm on an outside zone? Or what would I do if I'm on an inside zone? Or what would I do if I'm on a medium distance line? Or what would I do if I'm on the ground? What would I do if someone's approaching me from behind or from the front? Or that sort of thing. The idea is, whatever your situation, I think the most important thing is to be able to act, to be able to react, to be able to do something. To have the courage to will the power to execute. Now I'm going to give you the other half of the formula. I'm going to give you the knowledge. I'm going to show you what to do. It's always been my opinion not to learn 500 or 1,000 different self-defense techniques, which you can learn in any karate school or get out of any karate book or self-defense book, but to learn basically one good fast technique, one good powerful technique, maybe one good hand technique, like a simple punch or a simple strike with your hands. Now think about that. One good kicking technique, a powerful kick, a fast kick. How to restrain someone, like a restraining hold, or a come along lock, or some kind of a takedown, or what we call a finishing hold. A finishing hold is when you put someone unconscious, or you actually uh, choke them completely away. Or if you're lying on the ground, or laying on the ground, and someone were to attack you, how would you defend yourself if you're on the ground? So what I've done is I have selected, from my own personal reference, from my wrestling background, my boxing background, my kickboxing background, my uh, uh, karate background, and my self-defense background, all the books I've studied to work with professional wrestlers, professional boxers, professional kickboxers, professional karate people, a lot of uh, police tactic experts, and combat experts, realistic street altercation experts, and I've tried to come up with what I personally feel, what I personally think to be the 10 best self-defense techniques. So what we're gonna do is step by step, go through each one of these techniques, and by the end of the tape, I want you to try to decide based on your personal physical makeup and your own psychological nature, which one or two of these techniques best suits you in your particular situation. Now keep this in mind. Some people like to grapple, what we call grapplers. They like to grab, hold, bend, twist, that sort of thing. We're going to be doing some of those movements. The Aikido experts, the Jiu Jitsu experts, the wrestling experts, the Jiu Jitsu experts and Judo experts, what have you, they all basically like to grapple. They like to function once someone has placed their hand on them. Then you have the striking aspects of the martial arts. Those are like the kickboxers, the karate people, the boxers. They like to throw a punch, some sort of strike with the hands or some sort of strike with their feet. So what I want you to try to do is see by nature. If someone were to touch you, to push you, is your instinct to rush in and grab? In other words, by nature, or you what we call a grappler? Or if someone were to push you or strike you, is your nature, is your instinct, is that first impulse to come back with some sort of a striking form. So some of you are going to favor the striking aspects, some of you are going to favor the grappling aspects. Now as we go through these tapes, I want you to think about placing yourself in a realistic context. There's a lot of little self-defense rules that I can recommend, such as if you're walking down the street, Walk down the side of the street, that's the busiest. Don't walk near the buildings, walk near the street so there's always space between you and the buildings. Always walk down the side of the street, which is the most lit. And whenever you're by yourself, always make sure you're in eyesight of someone else or you're always within yelling distance of someone else. A lot of times people lose their purses or they get mugged or raped or something like that because they're not within yelling distance of someone. Little things like before you, you uh, get in your car, coming out of a shopping center or something like that, have your keys set in your hand so that you can always strike someone if they were to jump you. Fold those keys up, place them out in such a way that you can use the keys as a, as a weapon. Check the back seat of your car before you get in. There's a number of little things that you can do 
to sort of protect yourself, what I call preventive self-defense. Now, once you've gone beyond that point of what I call preventive self-defense, where, you know, where you're already in the context of being attacked or mugged or something like that, now I want to give you some knowledge, to give you some sort of a reassurance to be able to back yourself up, support yourself, save your life, if it may be. And we'll get to that in just a second. Now this is one of my favorite techniques. Bruce Lee, the late Bruce Lee, once made a comment to me, he said the first thing he would always do against anyone in any kind of situation is take away his eyes. I remember when we were fighting in Vietnam, you're coming up on a CP or camp, the enemy's camp, they'd always have a listing pulse or an out pulse up on this hilltop and they'd have the main uh, body of the enemy down on a, uh, a lower plane. We would always go up on a hill take away the enemy's eyes first before we'd attack the CP camp. The same thing you want to do in a realistic situation. If the man can't see you, how can he hurt you? Now watch this little move. Whenever I position myself against an aggressor, all right, my assistant today is Jim Graydon, he's a former member of the uh, world champion United States uh, karate team position. <clears throat> One thing I like to do is this. I always like to position my body so that my center line is <clears throat> away from my opponent. My face, my solar plexus, and my groin. Notice it's in the center of my body, and it forms a straight line. A number of your self-defense styles will teach you material like this. Well, I'll show you how to face your opponent, such as if someone were to have a gun on you, and you see this in police manuals, the first thing they'll tell you is raise your hands, and then the first thing you want to do is bring your hands down real fast, grab your opponent's wrist, and point the gun away from you. Now, although I've got my opponent's gun pointed away from me where I can take him into a wrist flex, take his gun away from him, notice the whole time my groin is completely exposed to the front kick. So as soon as I go for his groin, I mean, as soon as I go for his gun, what's going to happen to me? Bam! I'm going to get zapped right in the groin with a front kick or a knee. So whenever you face somebody, you want to deny your opponent access to the target. So one of my favorite ways of positioning against an opponent, and positioning is very important, is I like to turn my body sort of sideways. Sometimes I'll stand like this with my hands across the groin, my elbows are guarded by midsection, and I've got this shoulder up here in case she throws a punch, I can pull it up real fast and guard my face, or I'll sort of lean back and talk to him. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll cross my arms like this. And notice when I'm crossing my arms, I'm not locking my arms in place where I don't have access to be able to use my arms. I'll take my front arm, which is one closest to my opponent, that's the hand I always want to use first. Economy of motion, less distance to cover. I'll take that front arm and always place that one on top of the other arm. Now notice I've got my groin is protected, my rib cage is now protected. The only thing left unguarded is my face. So sometimes when I'm talking to a person, what I'll do is I'll take my hand and I'll use my hands to gesticulate, such as I'll be talking to them like this, I'll say, please, I really don't want to fight. Or I'll have my hand up around my face like this, talking to him like, gee, you know, I really didn't mean to involve you or get involved with this situation. I'll try to calm him down. I'll say things like, I could tell you're really mad. You probably like nothing more than knock my head off, right? See, what I'm trying to do is anesthetize the anger, drain the anger out of him, rather than saying, oh, yeah, you think you can beat me up? Drew, just try it. Now, notice how I'm positioned. Watch me facing you. Notice the groin is protected. My rib cage is protected, my elbows are in front of my ribs, my hand is up in front of my face. So my whole body is now protected. Now as I start to talk to my opponent, watch my hand come out. Notice how close my hand is now to my opponent as I'm trying to talk to him. My hand is still pretty much in front of my face. Now watch this movement. Jim, position. As I'm talking to him, I say, Jim, or, or rather, sir, I really don't want to fight. Now notice how close my hands are to my opponent. It is almost impossible for him to block what I'm getting ready to do. Now, you women who wear rings, you women have long fingernails, or you karate instructors who are teaching your female students or what have you, I always like to go for the eyes first. Now, watch this little movement with my wrist. I'm just simply bending my wrist, and what I'm going to do is with two fingers, I'm going to pop one of the eyes. 
as I pop one of the eyes, watch how fast it, pow! If you hit one eye, the other eye automatically closes. Notice as I hit the eyes, watch what happens to the body. The head goes back, notice the groin comes forward. Now watch my next movement, please. I'm gonna swing down, pivoting around what we call a soft bow position. Does everybody see the soft bow position? Watch my right hand, it comes down, it swings, either with the heel of the hand or with the fist, either one, I swing it straight back into his groin. Bang! Notice as I hit the groin, what happens to the head of the body? The head rocks back forward. Does that make you the rocking motion? As the head comes forward, he's presenting me with another target. I swing right back. Notice my knuckles. I bring the knuckles right back up, and I just swing it anywhere at the head. Hopefully, I can pinpoint it and hit the temple, or I can come across and hit this little carotid sinus region here, or hit the jawbone as I come back up. Now watch. If you want to practice this technique, get a piece of paper, hang it from the ceiling, hang it from a door, put, cut a little two piece, of, uh, cut a couple little holes in there, or anything at all that you can hang, and just practice flicking with your hands like this. Just get that movement down. And when you do it, try to set before you fire. Just learn to fire that technique from wherever your hands are. If your hands are down here near your pockets, come straight up at the eyes, pow! If your hands are on your hips, straight out the eyes. Your hands are across, straight at the eyes. Your hands are here, or from this position here. And at any time, if he was starting to grab or something, start to grab, I can touch and always strike back at the same time real fast. Or if he was starting to grab and I don't have time to go for the eyes, watch this defense position. Just drop down real fast and swing as hard as you can. Wow, right to the groin or the elbow. Wow, straight back to the rib cage. Notice where the heel of my foot is. From here, I can bring my heel straight up into the groin, pow. Or, if I was afraid of him, what I might do is hit the eyes real fast, blind him, take a half step back, kick, and take off running. Now, that is the fastest technique there is in all fighting. And you professional black belts out there who are teaching this, gym position against me, always remember, instead of moving the shoulder first and then moving the hand, as you will see on my tape on deceptive penetration and also on my tape on angular attack, try to move the weapon before you move the body. In other words, try to move this fist before you move the shoulder. Watch my hand. Hand goes first. Watch. Hand first, and then on in out, bring your shoulder into it for power. Okay? There's many ways of practicing that. Sometimes I'll have an instructor hold his hand up like this. And you can just practice different ways of striking with your fingertips. Jim, come here a second. There's many ways of going at the eyes. Sometimes you just go straight out in this way. Sometimes you go with a thumb and a little finger. Sometimes if someone's got glasses on, you take the glasses off with the first two fingers. And the next fingers come through, you take the eyes. Or you come sideways this way. Watch my hand come sideways. You grab the, the eyes. Or rather, you grab the uh, eye glasses with the little finger. Pull the eyeglasses off as the other fingers come through and grab. Or you can come underneath this way. Slide up underneath the glasses and hook. Once you take away someone's eyes, it's pretty easy to defend yourself after that. Okay. All right, our next technique is what I call the best come along. The best come along. Now listen to what that means. Sometimes you're in a situation where you might be at a party and it's your best friend and you don't want to go up and just punch your best friend out or kick him in the groin or something like that, draw blood, bruise him, or run into some sort of a legal uh, altercation the next day. So there are ways of holding your opponent, restraining your opponent, subduing your opponent, containing your opponent in such a way that there's no bodily harm done. Now, some of these moves will involve a little strength, but basically it's the technique that does the job. Now, some of you policemen out there, I'm going to show you a little technique here, which is good for uh, setting some up for a handcuff movement. Now, watch. Here's just a couple of introduction movements. Let's say an opponent comes up to aggress on you. Now, Jim, just reach out and just grab my wrist right here real hard. Now, watch. There are many ways of utilizing a little come on. One way is I can reach up here, clasp my hand on top of his, hold it nice and tight, 
take my right hand, loop it over his wrist, and grab. I've got a lock. Now as I step back with my right foot, notice I'm breaking his balance forward. Now I can pull him along, or from this position I could come up with a front kick, boom, and continue to do him all the way down if I wanted to. Okay, come back up, Jim. Sometimes I may ask my assailant, hey, please, I really don't want to fight. Hey, let's be friends, and I'll stick my hand out there, offer him a handshake, and I'll use something like this. Jim, please, I don't want to fight. Let's just be friends. He goes for the handshake. As soon as his palm is contained within mine, I've got him. Now watch what I'm going to do here in slow motion. I'll take my opposite hand and grab his wrist and lock his hand into my own grip. That's important. Watch it again. Lock it into place. Now watch my right foot. I'm going to take my right foot, pull back, break his balance just a little bit, get him coming forward. In my next step, watch my right foot. I'm going to step just to the side of his right foot as I swing under his arm. Watch it slow motion now. Swing it under his arm all the way through. Now, at this point here, watch his wrist. I'm going to spin his wrist, twist his wrist in a clockwise direction. See the twisting? And at the same time I twist his wrist, I'm going to bend it also. Make sure when you bend it, the palm of his hand is up, the knuckles are pointing back towards him. I'm twisting the wrist in this direction at the same time I'm bending it. Bend it and twist it. Notice the elbow is up. Now from here, he can get away from it, but you pull that into your chest. Notice how I'm pulling it into the chest and lock it into place. Wherever I point my finger, here go. If I point my fingers down, say, Jim, let's kneel down, he'll kneel right down with me. Say, oh, Jim, let's go back up. He'll go back. Oh, Jim, let's go for a walk. He'll go, oh, let's go this way. He'll go anywhere I want him. Now if he starts to move away, you can do this. You can pull this elbow right into your chest, lock it to your chest. Reach up here underneath his arm, see I'm coming underneath his arm, and lock that wrist in place. And he won't go anywhere. Now you policeman, you can reach over here and grab the handcuffs, come out and lock it in place here, take him into a handcuff position if you want. Okay, that reposition, Jim. Face me again. Sometimes a person will come up to you and start to push you, like, hey, that sort of thing. I see that in movies, as a matter of fact. Now watch. Good technique for you policemen. Here's another come along. The hands start to come towards you. Watch what my hands do. Come forward with both your hands. Now watch. Slow motion. Watch what I do with my hands. My hands come up and over. The way see the movement. Come up and over. I slide down his arms. As I slide down his arms, look at my left hand. I'm grabbing the top of his wrist. I lock it in place. Now, as I lock it in place, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch over here, grab hands, turn his palm up. As I turn his palm up, watch where I step. I'm going to step to his right side. As I step into his right side, I'm going to come under his arm and over the top. As I bend that wrist back, watch it again. Come under his elbow, over the top, bending his elbow down. If he tries to straighten the arm out, straighten the arm out. If he straightens the arm out, I bend it down. I bend his knuckles down and back, and I lock into place just using these two fingers. Grab just those two fingers. Let the two little fingers go. And I've got him with one hand. Policeman, you reach back here. You grab your handcuffs. You hook it on nice in place here. You take it from here. You go behind him with a hammer lock, and you ask him very nicely to hand you the other hand, and you simply secure the handcuffs. Sometimes, Jim, can you stand to my left side here? <clears throat> Face straight ahead. If you're working with a woman, you've got to restrain a woman. If you're a policeman or something like this, or you're restraining someone as a family member, you walk into a nightclub, they've got the hands on the bar, oh, I'm not going anywhere. You take these two little fingers, just the two little fingers, exact same movement. You come underneath here, bend and pull back. You just simply grab those two little fingers and lock it right into place. Ma'am, do you mind we, that if I go? And she'll go anywhere you ask her to go. Now, remember, on this come along technique here, face me, as soon as he starts to reach out to grab, hands come up and down. You want to grab these two fingers, these two fingers. Step around as you spin the wrist, 
Step around, come up and break. Up and break. Break your lock. Reach up and grab and you've got him. He'll go anywhere you want him to. There are many other little come along techniques. Sometimes somebody reach up to grab me and I'll just reach up into a simple wrist flex here. Watch this one. Point the thumb down, lock here. He'll go anywhere you want him. As he goes down, you can kick or take him into a restraining hole. Lie down flat, Jim, or break your arm. Thank you very much. All right, hand me your other arm out here. All right, lay down flat or break your arm. As he lies down flat, stick your arms up straight. Give me the other arm. Come on, give me the other arm. Thank you. You can sit here and hold the 300 pound man like this with no problem whatsoever. Okay, so I've got to come along into a trapping pin if I wanted to. All right. Thank you. And that's how I would execute my favorite come along. Try to pick one of those that seems to fit your taste and your needs and work on it. Keep in mind, if your opponent breaks out of the come along, always be prepared to follow through with either a Sunday punch or your favorite kick or one of the other techniques that are coming up next. The most powerful technique in all martial arts is the side kick. Some people say the spin back kick. You can break more boards defensively or offensively. It's the safest technique that I know of. One of my instructors who taught me this technique in Okinawa, incidentally, was jumped by five people once. Gangs, hoodlums. He hit three of them with the side kick. Two of them went to the hospital, one of them was killed. The other two got away. And in Okinawa, back in those days, you could petition to someone and get, it, get them out of prison. So I knew this technique worked when he taught it to me. Now, basically, it looks like this. My partner, Jim, just stand there. What we're doing is, again, using a simple side position, which we used before. You're standing here, you can take a step back, or you're standing here, you can take a simple step forward. Notice the position of my body. And what we're doing is, trying to hit your opponent with either the bottom of the heel or the side of your foot. There's many ways of hitting somebody. You can hit them with a front kick. You could hit them with a round kick. You could hit them with a hook and heel kick. Or you could hit them with an ax kick or a spin kick or what have you. Basically, this kick looks something like this. You're taking a simple slide up step to your opponent, folding your knee, rotating that hip, and stepping straight in towards your opponent's stomach, hitting with the heel of the body. Boom, in and straight back. Back reposition. Now you can buy yourself a heavy bag or have someone hold an air shield. Or if you'd like, just practice firing at a tree trunk or the side of a door. Don't make contact or have someone stand like my partner Jim is standing. Now watch again, watch the movement. You can slide straight up or you can simply step behind, point your heel towards your opponent, keep your body fairly low, and from this point here, what I'm going to do is fold my knee up. As I fold my knee up, I'm going to arc my back back a little bit and stick my foot straight in like I'm stomping at the ground, straight in towards my opponent's midsection, lock the foot out, pull it straight back, back reposition. If you're firing it fast, it might look something like this. The most important part of this movement is your initial move. Try to explode on the initial move. Try to make that first step explosive and sudden. In and out. Again, in and out. And you can hit different parts of your opponent's body with this particular kick. You can go anywhere from the shin bone, striking downstairs at the shin, or up at the midsection, or all the way up to the head, depending on how flexible you are with your kicks. <sighs> Again, if your opponent is aggressing on you, such as if he's starting to come towards me, you can take a half step back, put a little space cushion between the two of you, and then work the counter kick. Or if 
your partner's pretty much holding his ground, you might set the kick up like so. Come in a little closer. He starts to aggress on you. Just reach up there real fast, slap him. Pow! Half step back, and real fast, explode in. Boom! Drill that kick in there hard. Take off running for the police, or running home to mommy, or whatever your case may be. Promise you, there's not a more powerful kick than that. And if you hit your opponent right here in the midsection, getting what I call a good concussive blow, you don't have to break a rib, but if you just knock the wound out of them, I don't care if they're high on narcotics, or if they're uh, strung out on uh, alcohol, or if they're just big, physically tough. If you can hit them hard enough, hit them hard enough, right there in that solar plexus, or any part of this lower rib cage here, with a good concussive blow, knock the wind out of them, I guarantee you they will stop. Practice that kick. Some of you are interested, you may want to join a karate school and practice firing a kick back and forth against a sparring partner. Maybe something like this. Watch my partner and I do this exercise. Square up against me. Now Jim is going to fire a side kick at me, then we're going to reposition, I'm going to fire the side kick back at him. This is how you might practice it in a more realistic professional setting. All right, he's firing a kick at me first. Position. Now I'm coming back at him. Then he comes back at me. So you learn to kick and counter kick. Again, when I was kickboxing back in my competitive days, this was by far my favorite kick. I remember entering the 1966 United States National Karate Championships. And I won that tournament that day, and, no one, and I was only had one point scored on me during the entire day. You know what technique I used to win that tournament? The side kick. So you work on it. 